So, this is Tia Laukola from uh, the European University Association. However, this time, uh, uh, this time I'm talking to you um, on behalf of the EUA's uh, Institutional Evaluation Program and as the person in charge of, the, of this program. Institutional Evaluation Program, in short, uh, what we call IEP, um, is, a, is an external quality assurance agency and a program, um, but it is a slightly different one. It's not very uh, necessarily what your typical national external national quality assurance agency would be like. And the idea is today to spend, to spend about an hour to discuss how our um, evaluations that we offer really work and basically as the name of this session says, what is it all about? And we hope to do that uh, by um, uh, covering it from different perspectives. And we have three different speakers uh, explaining their, from their perspective what uh, IEP is all about. Uh, we will start with uh, Tatiana Volkova from uh, our steering committee. Tatiana is part of the evaluators and also the steering committee that manages the institutional evaluation program. And she will explain to us the basics and the philosophy of, of the program. Then we'll move on to uh, Anna Gover, my colleague from the IEP Secretariat, who will explain how this really works step by step, yeah, uh, what one can expect from an IEP uh, process. And then last but certainly not the least, uh, Nuno Gimares uh, will explain to us what it really is like for an institution to go undergo this kind of an evaluation and what are the lessons learned from in his institution uh, on this. So I hope that with these two, three presentations we'll manage to cover different uh, perspectives and um, you get an idea what, um, what the IEP is about. Before we get to the presentations, however, a few practicalities. Uh, we would also, well, first of all, we are register, recording the, this uh, webinar and, may, and we'll post it online afterwards. So, for instance, if, if you know people who would like to watch this afterwards, please uh, feel free to uh, disseminate the, um, the website, uh, website, uh, link which, we'll, which we will um, have online, uh, for instance, in the EUA website later on. Secondly, we would also want to hear from you during this session and we are very much looking forward to your comments and your questions. As you can see from the slide that is in front of you at the moment, um, we have a chat box and I see that Claudia is the first one who was courageous enough to post something there. So please use the um, uh, use the chat box to signal to us um, any issues that you have. With Claudia's case, the trouble is with the speakers, which she hopefully will manage to uh, fix by the time we uh, get really to the presentations. So I'm just giving time here for a few minutes now. So there is a chat box which you can write to any, at any time. We will then pick up after the presentations some of the issues you have raised. Um, and similarly, at the same, while the speakers are presenting, we will also uh, post one uh, question to you. Uh, all this, uh, and the question will always be there during that presentation. And then we will close the poll and see what you have replied to that question. So please uh, uh, react to the question so that we get some further issues to be discussed. Um, I think those are the most important details to be covered at this point and household maintenance issues. Um, at this stage, I will move a little bit to the background and I'll give the floor first to Tatiana, who will get us started in explaining what, uh, how IEP works and what it really is about, because I was trying my best not to take away your words, so I hope I manage it. 
And now below uh, Tatiana's image, uh, you can see the, the first question. Which of the following characteristics of IEP is different from your national system? So please, Tatiana. Thank you. Thank you, Tia. Hi, everyone. It's my big pleasure to deliver a short introduction of the institutional evaluation program. And uh, first, it's of course the question why particular institutional evaluation program, because we know that many higher education institutions today and also their leaders face a number of challenges because we have to fulfill our critical role in society. And the institutional evaluation program offers institutional support as they face these challenges because we are on constant change and, of course, how to manage institutional change and how to enhance quality. This is uh, institutional evaluation program focus. If we talk about the institutional evaluation pro program activities, it's external quality assurance agency and also it's registered on ECOR and it's a full member of ENCLA. The program was founded in 1994, already 23 years in existence. And as you see from the map, it's carried out many evaluations for 100 currently in 47 countries worldwide. It means that it's really extensive experience being gathered during these years. What are the main aims of institutional evaluation program? Based on the fact that it's independent from governments and other bodies, and I would like to emphasize especially that it doesn't not lead to accreditation or rankings, it helps uh, to deliver some insights into the institutional structures, processes, policies, cultures, and also enable them to perform full range on their activities in line with their strategic plans and objectives. So. That's why how we are looking into institutions in order to provide recommendations for building capacity to address these changes. And the institutional evaluation program evaluations aim to support higher education institutions actively in fulfilling their mission. Institutional evaluation program is very specific one and unique because it has several distinctive features. As it's been mentioned, the main aim is to strengthen institutional development and capacity to manage change, like providing support for leadership. And the main starting point, what we always keep in mind, it's institution's own mission. It's improvement oriented. And of course, uh, it has European and international perspective. And what is the most important that it's peer review approach like being a critical friend in order to help university to develop and to fulfill its mission. The main focus of the evaluation is fitness for purpose and fitness is of purpose. Because the evaluation is looking for institution as a whole. So based on integrated approach, holistic approach, not like many universities so far been concerned about individual study programs evaluation, this program is looking to institution as a whole. And of course, focus of the evaluation is decision-making process and institutional structures and effectiveness of strategic management to help for organizational development of universities. As well, program has this relevance and um, towards looking and uh, evaluating internal quality processes and the degree to which outcomes are used in decision-making process and strategic management. Of course, in order to give recommendations, there are also some perceived gaps of these internal mechanisms, which later is addressed due to the recommendations. There's four key questions being asked during evaluation, of course, in more details, but main key questions addressed it's what institution is trying to do. As you see on the slides, there are different elements being investigated. Also, the next question, what the teams are looking at, it's how the institution is trying to do, where is the evidence about processes, procedures, practices that these are in place, and also there is 
analysis uh, of effectiveness of these procedures and processes what have been investigated. Also, how university knows that it works, what is the feedback systems and how this quality outcomes been measured and what are the results, and how does the institution change in order to improve. Or this capacity to change, it's also the focus during the evaluation. What are the main benefits for institutions which apply for institutional evaluation program? As I mentioned before, this evaluation is tailored to the institutional profile and geared towards improving their capacity to reach strategic goals and fulfill mission. And it has truly European focus. And it's very important as universities are starting to benefit already during the self-evaluation process, which usually have to be very critical, self-reflective, understanding how university is operating like a whole. And that's why two site visits by an evaluation team are carried out. And final reports that highlights good practices are developed and of course, recommendations based on different aspects of evaluation given to university for their consideration. Evaluation team which comes for evaluation, it's really uh, based on and format uh, like uh, having different experience and expertise. And then it's really one of the greatest strengths. A team is coming from different countries and also it's not only current and former rectors or vice rectors, but also students are involved and also senior higher education experts from across the Europe. And each evaluation team is carefully composed on the basis of the institutional priorities and also profile. And of course, this team offers diversity of expertise and university cultures. It helps to investigate and understand deeper uh, activities carried out by university and to develop recommendations. We know that uh, IEP doesn't end with the final report, because some benefits are already coming in preparation stage during the visits. Of course, those recommendations are in great help, but real benefits come after the final report. As the university community examines the findings, of the evaluation team and addresses their recommendations by assessing their usage and also benefits for universities as a whole. And to support institutions further, IEP gives evaluated institutions also the op option to register for the follow-up evaluation. And many universities are taking this opportunity and they register after one or three years after initial evaluation for the follow-up visit, which also gives some recognition of the efforts of university, which they make in order to improve. So this was really brief introduction for IEP program. And thank you for your attention. And we'll be happy to have more uh, questions maybe, and also universities who are looking to this evaluation program uh, signing. Thank, Thank you, you. Ta Tatiana, uh, for the overview of what IEP is and what our philosophy is. Um, we are now closing the poll and it was clear that everyone who replied to it said that the two site visits is one of the things that makes um, IEP different from their national uh, external quality assurance. You, Tatiana, you um, regularly carry out IEP evaluations uh, for us. I think you've just uh, had one visit uh, a few weeks ago. And how, how do you see the benefit of these yeah. two site visits? What does it mean for the, for the team and the panel and uh, for, for their work? Yes, uh, because uh, it's like it's mentioned, the two site visits, uh, it's a point would be mentioned by participants. But from the team uh, who is coming, the first visit is like getting to know more about university itself. And the first visit, usually we are meeting rector and talking about issues and also meeting academic community, research community, students to understand better what kind of academic life and priorities they have. 
and uh, it gives us good ground to look for deeper into university's activities and then for the next visit we come already with uh, deeper insight into not only what's mentioned in self evaluation report but also getting the notion of culture relations between different bodies within university and during second visit when we get uh, familiar with another set of documents what we asked usually at the end of the first visit and meeting administrative staff the full picture appears which gives us really good ground and uh, it's like evidence-based recommendations and it's really good that the team comes back and we can go deeper and find the full picture of university activities to fulfill its mission. You've carried out um, IAP evaluations for us uh, um, in, in many, many countries. And uh, this is typically what, what, uh, what our experts do. Um, my question would be that, are there certain challenges that come across again and again? Uh, you know, can you give examples of typical matters that the European uh, universities are bringing up, for instance, in the evaluations as a challenge? Yes, uh, and thank you for the uh, question. It's really so, because um, if a program is looking for evaluation of the institution as a whole, and the first step uh, in order to deliver good results, it is really clear what university is aiming to achieve. What are the strategic directions of development like? What is our uh, vision, mission and strategic goals? And what we see is that sometimes those strategic goals are not, let's say, maybe formulated up to extent which gives us clear understanding of the focus for the next stage of development. We see that uh, key performance indicators are lacking what really we mean by saying we are going to improve our quality, how we are going to measure, we will become more international, how we understand this internationalization. Usually it's a tool to deliver something. And this first what we observe is that lack of the clear uh, goals and indicators uh, universities are going to achieve. And also we see that there is communication gap between administration, academic community members, and also external stakeholders. This is the issues which need to be improved. And sometimes even what comes across is that during our meeting, many new things come up, but other even community of university doesn't know itself. So there are certain features. Then I, say. I have one more question to you. When you, when you go and visit a university, what, what is the typical first question that you ask as the team chair? As a team chair, it depends uh, to whom. Because for the rectors, and directors usually invites us, we ask what, why he invited us. Yeah, what is the agenda? What he wants to address? What is the challenges they want to overcome or to address? When we meet our students in university, of course, the first question for students, do they like to study in this university? Yeah, And uh, for academic community, of course, is why do they work for university? So very general questions and then stories come up yes. and discussions okay. could start. Um, well, I thank you for, for the time being, uh, for your input. We are going to take away your, your image for a moment. But I will, in the end, when we have gone through all the mm -hmm. three presentations, uh, I will invite you back to the uh, panel discussion part. But thank you for, for now. We will move on to the next uh, phase of the, of the webinar and um, go to my colleague Anna Gover, who will explain to you how the uh, evaluation works in practice, what happens uh, step by step. And um, while she's talking, uh, there is another question to you uh, to answer. So please use that opportunity. Thank you, Tina. Yes. Um, what I'm going to do is just um, go into a little bit more detail about um, how the evaluation process works in practice. 
So the main stages of the evaluation you will probably recognize from, from any other evaluation that you've been through, um, a self-evaluation phase, site visit, report, and follow-up. But I'm going to go through each of these steps and just uh, mention perhaps a few specificities uh, related to, uh, to IED in particular. So at the start, of course, um, institutions register for, for IEP um, by way of a, a registration form that's signed by the head of the institution. If, uh, if you're interested in registering um, for an evaluation to take place in the academic year 2017 to 18, then you should note that the registration deadline is the 30th of June this year. The registration form and all the relevant information there is, uh, is available on the, the IEP website. Um, after registration, um, institutions have the opportunity uh, to have a preparatory video conference or workshop with the IEP Secretariat. And this is where we have the chance in a bit more detail um, to go through with the institution um, what the expectations are for the evaluation process and how things really work in, in practice. We have the opportunity um, to answer any really practical questions about all the different arrangements. Um, and, and clarify the expectations. At the same time, uh, here in the IEP Secretariat, we're working uh, to um, compose the evaluation teams. Tatiana already mentioned that, uh, that IEP takes a peer review approach, so we have evaluation teams that are made up of, of rectors and vice rectors and higher education professionals and students. And the teams are really put together um, with a view to ensuring a representation of, of diverse um, types of institutions, uh, different countries. Uh, no two team members will be from the same country and no team member will be from the country in which the institution is situated. So the experts really bring with them a range of different expertise and profiles. Um, when they visit an institution, then they can bring lots of different uh, perspectives with them. Then the institution starts its self-evaluation phase. Um, this uh, is something that um, we hear from, from our evaluated institutions that um, is, is perhaps one of the most beneficial parts of the, the whole evaluation process. And uh, when we hear from the, the colleague, um, uh, in the next presentation, I'm, I'm hoping he might back me up here, but, uh, but we'll hear what he, see what he has to say. So the self-evaluation phase is really um, the opportunity for the, the institution to examine its own processes, its own policies, and um, take a moment for reflection um, and critical analysis. Of course, the, the end result is, is the self-evaluation report, and this has to be submitted to us and will be passed on to the evaluation team. The evaluation team use the self-evaluation report really as their, their first point of evidence and their first source of information uh, for the, the evaluation. So they will go through it in advance of the visit and, and look at what the key issues are and what they want to follow up on during the visit. It's also, of course, um, an opportunity for the institution to highlight particular areas that um, it would like the team to focus on uh, while they're conducting the evaluation. The self-evaluation report and then the subsequent um, evaluation by, by the IEP team will cover um, a range of different areas. Um, as Tatiana already mentioned, the IEP evaluations don't focus on um, one specific area of an institution or, or specific programmes. It's a really a comprehensive approach. So it takes into account uh, governance and decision making, quality assurance and quality culture, learning and teaching, research, service to society and internationalization. And the four key questions that, that Tatiana mentioned in her presentation are applied to every single one of these different areas. What I should perhaps also say at this point is that um, we also use um, as a source the um, uh, standards and guidelines for quality assurance in the European higher education area. So these are taken into account when, when reviewing the, um, the institution as well. And then there's two site visits. Uh, we already saw from the, the results of the, um, the poll question um, connected to the previous uh, presentation um, that this is something which perhaps differentiates the IEP approach from 
uh, from many other uh, evaluation procedures. And um, Tatiana uh, and Tia have, have more or less covered in their conversation what I wanted to say here, which was that um, the first visit is there for the team to gain a broad understanding of the workings of the institution. And then the second visit allows the team to, to explore um, certain issues in a bit more detail. And the time between the two visits, um, it's usually about six to eight weeks. And this gives the team an opportunity to reflect on the findings of the first visit and think about what they want to follow up in the second one. It's, I think, important to say that there's no report at the end of the first visit. So the, the team do not come to any definitive judgments on the basis of the first visit. And we do hear when talking to some of our experts that their, their perception of the institution may change between the first and the second visit. So it's the, these two visits really allow for, um, for a much more comprehensive and holistic view of the institution. The final result is, of course, the evaluation report. The institution will get a first indication of the team's findings already at the second, end of the second site visit. The team will present their findings orally um, to, uh, to the rector first and then to, to the institutional community. Um, and then they will go away and um, create a written version of this report. The report will highlight various areas of good practice, um, but also identify uh, the areas where perhaps there's room for improvement. And this will include then specific, develop, uh, specific recommendations for development in each of the different areas that, are, that I mentioned before that's, that the evaluation covers. The, the institution will receive a draft version of, of the report and has the opportunity to check it for any, any factual errors. Um, and then it is finalized and we um, publish all evaluation reports on the IEP website and of course send the final version to the institution. Uh, at this point, of course, we, we encourage the institution to, to disseminate the report to, to the whole institutional uh, community and, and particularly those that have been involved in, in the site visit and, and the evaluation process. And again, I can only uh, reiterate what, um, what Tatiana mentioned, which is that uh, the evaluation process, of course, doesn't, doesn't end with the report. Um, in order to make the most of it, there has to be a, a comprehensive and, and effective follow-up procedure. Of course, um, the bulk of that takes place within the institution, that is, um, that is up to the institution, how they wish to address uh, the recommendations that, that the IEP team give. Um, because IEP is voluntary, uh, our follow-up procedures don't involve checking that these, these recommendations have been implemented. Um, it's up to the institution to decide whether or not to implement them. But what we do request is that the institution provides a progress report after one year. Um, this is not supposed to be another long self-evaluation report. It should just be a, a short um, statement of, of what has happened since the evaluation. It's, um, the aim of this is, is, is twofold. It, it obviously um, allows the institution to take stock and, and think about what they've done since the evaluation, but it also allows us at IEP and, and our experts to, to gain an understanding of what the impact of the evaluation has been. And then IEP offers the option of a follow-up evaluation, and institutions can request this uh, between one and three years after the initial evaluation. And this is a slightly lighter touch approach in the sense that um, the evaluation involves just one visit instead of two visits. But the idea is to examine um, what has happened since the first evaluation, and also consider if there are new challenges, new issues that have come up in the intervening time. Uh, the process is, is more or less the same. There's a self-evaluation phase. As I mentioned, there's just one site visit instead of two, and then there's further report and um, further recommendations. And then what we try and do in terms of the evaluation team is we put together a team that consists uh, partly of people that were involved in the initial evaluation, but then partly um, some new team members. And this means that there is an element of continuity uh, but also some fresh perspectives, um, so some people that, that don't know anything about the institution and, and can bring in a, a different view of it. So this is basically a, a sort of whirlwind tour of, of IEP step by step. 
Um, the uh, contact details um, are there on, on the screen if you want to get more information. As I say, the website is also where you will find the uh, registration form if you're interested in, in signing up for an evaluation next year. Um, thank you, Anna. Um, we're closing the poll again. Um, and it looks like um, it's clear that the PDCA cycle is more common in quality assurance, which kind of is not that uh, surprising. Um, Anna, one of your tasks at, um, at uh, um, IEP Secretariat is to read through all the evaluation reports. Um, does this surprise you that it, the, the cycle seems to be more common in a, in a university in certain areas than in the others? Uh, no, not entirely. Um, as you say, I think uh, it's fairly natural that a quality assurance uh, procedure um, is, is covered by its own quality assurance procedures. Um, but I see when, when looking in further detail at the results of the poll that um, the next highest response is, is learning and teaching. Um, and this is indeed the area which is most commonly um, covered by, by some kind of plan do check act um, approach at the university. Uh, I see when reading the reports that it's much less common that um, aspects such as service to society and, um, and internationalization are covered by this kind of approach. Um, I think the, of, of the, when we talk about the three university missions of, of teaching, research and, and the, the third mission, so service to society, it tends to be service to society that gets a bit left behind in this respect. Right. Do you recognize this, Tatiana, as well, as a result? Yes, <clears throat> yes, I do, because it's uh, already obvious uh, from the answers from participants that um, not comprehensive approach to delivering this organizational development takes place currently, but it develops uh, rather fast. I think that uh, leaders of universities more and more aware of this other aspects which have been not maybe so much addressed it needs to be taken into consideration. And IAP as a tool, it's in great help for this. No, no. Would this, yes. uh, would this result reflect uh, what you see in your institution? The results that you are mentioning? The results of this poll that uh, if you look at the, whether the plan do check act is uh, check act cycle is in place. It's most typically in uh, in teaching. Yeah, and, that's uh, true. That's true. Yeah. 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 Yes. So we can see there are certain things that are common across Europe. We have a question, yeah. Anna, to you. Um, so Anna, can you give an estimation of how much time? Yes, I'm just going take. to actually take you back to the very first slide um, and leave it up there for a moment. Um, we, we generally say that for the evaluation process itself, um, this takes one year. Um, so if an institution starts their self-evaluation process in, in, say, September, um, we recommend that um, you take around three months for the self-evaluation process. It's, it's one of these things that if, if you do it properly, then it, it does take some time. And then the first um, site visit usually takes place in, in early spring. Um, so around March, April time, and then the second visit um, in the late spring or early summer. The team will then spend um, the, uh, the summer writing uh, the report um, and you'll usually have the, the report by the end of, of the academic year. Um, what, I, what I perhaps should um, stress is the, the timeline that you see on the screen now um, we, we do have some flexibility in this, and um, this is the, the, the standard approach that we use, uh, but if an institution um, has, a, has a specific timeline that they need to follow, if they have a specific deadline by which they need the report, uh, then we would encourage you to let us know and, and we can, as far as possible, work to that. All right, thank you for the clarification. Um, now we'll move to the third presentation, which I think is, will take us really to the core of the issue. Um, the Instituto Universitario de Lisboa has signed up for IEP evaluation, and actually twice, as we will now hear. 
So I, I left Nuno you to exp explain how the process looks like from a university perspective. And while you are talking, there is another question to the participants. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you are hearing me well. Thank you very much to uh, the members of this panel, to all the participants, wherever uh, you are. And uh, let me tell you, it's a pleasure to be here and tell you our experience. I must say that all that was told before by the two previous speakers is actually true. Uh, and I'm going to go very quickly uh, uh, over our experience with, uh, with IEP. So the, the topics I will mention are these. Uh, a little bit of context, one minute, and then an overview of the process seen from our side. And probably most important, the impact that we still, that we feel that uh, this process has and uh, the advantages that we gain by going through this. So, uh, ISCTE, the University Institute, Institute of Lisbon, is a uh, Portuguese young, uh, it was created in 72, mid-sized for us. Uh, 9,000 students, 300 faculty, and a public university with a focus in social sciences, management, and economy, and also uh, IT and architecture. Uh, and uh, not only uh, uh, for, for local, national, but also international reasons, we have valued very much the importance of quality assessment, certification, accreditation, and rankings, a concern that a lot of uh, universities have for sure. Uh, so we have the national agencies, also IEP, and then the more specific rankings and uh, accreditations, and we're always going uh, after uh, the, um, this assessment process. Now, we registered in, uh, for IEP in July 2012, so it's almost five years ago. Uh, then there was a, a self-evaluation committee that was set up, uh, including uh, uh, members from the rectorate or administration, faculty, technical staff, uh, and students. Um, and then this was the first uh, challenge. Uh, I'll try to, to address questions that are uh, popping up in the chat box. Um, it takes a couple of months until you produce the self-evaluation uh, report. Uh, as Anna mentioned, Anna mentioned more the uh, elapsed time. You are probably also uh, uh, worrying about the working time. Uh, and you have to have two, three people almost full time uh, during this process. And then you have to uh, broaden your scope of analysis and discussion to all the academic units governing boards, department committees, senate as a more uh, structural uh, body, um, also meeting with students association, non-faculty non staff and so on. So it takes uh, some time and some working time. The self-evaluation report then was delivered in December. And then we had, uh, as uh, it was mentioned, a first visit in February uh, 2013 and then a second uh, in June, uh, and in the meantime, we uh, delivered further, further docu documentation. That the meetings, as you may imagine, they they start with uh, meetings with the administration or the rector, or vice rectors, then faculty, non-faculty staff, students, alumni, uh, and uh, external stakeholders. I just uh, underlined external stakeholders because I think they are a, a very important component of this. Um, of these visits and they can give you, uh, it's not that we influence people when we have assessment procedures, but they are much more open uh, and much more positive and much more critical to the, to the things they would like to see improved. Uh, so we had then a second visit in June 2013 and the evaluation report uh, returned to us in July uh, of that year. The, what do we get from the evaluation reports? We have those areas of review that were mentioned by Hannah. Uh, governance and management, uh, teaching and learning, research, service to society, quality culture and internationalization. Uh, you see there just uh, uh, some figures, the, the number of recommendations that we got per area. So this is just to give you a, 
an idea that this first assessment is um, rather detailed. We had it, it sums up, I think, 48 or something. Uh, and uh, the recommendations touch very uh, specific things like uh, what shall we do with the English teaching courses, what shall we do internationally, what type of organization should we improve in service to society and mechanisms and so on. Uh, so this was the, the first report at the time. Then we requested this uh, follow-up evaluation uh, in 2015. The self-evaluation report was delivered, of course, uh, it gave us, uh, it was much easier to, uh, to present than the, than the first one, also because the teams are set up and the people are already aware of the, of the procedure. And then we had another site visit in, um, in June, uh, after which we received this evaluation report with 12 broader recommendations. So uh, uh, we felt that between the first and the second, uh, uh, between the, the first assessment and the follow-up uh, review, uh, the level, of course, naturally uh, goes up. Uh, and then the, the 12 broader recommendations that we got in, in the, in the follow-up evaluation were uh, more structural than the, than the early ones. Now let me go directly to the impact and, the, and results, what we get uh, from this uh, exercise. First, we develop this operational capacity for self-assessment self and self-evaluation. Uh, it may be there because of uh, national requirements and other requirements, but uh, uh, it gets developed with this, uh, with this exercise and it's something like an asset that we, that we now have in place and we can reproduce because, as I'm sure all our colleagues from other universities feel the same, we are uh, being evaluated uh, most of the time formally and uh, all the time informally, of course. Uh, it helped us also to develop this community involvement practices. You have to convince people, uh, convince, uh, order, uh, uh, seduce, whatever. You have to convince all these people to be part of the process. And uh, that's something that once it's done, will never go away. It also gives some uh, experience of peer reviewing by the community uh, uh, as a whole. It's not that uh, especially faculty, of course, it's, they are used to peer review, but to be reviewed at this level of concern is uh, also an experience that is gained. Uh, it consolidates the self-analysis framework that uh, IEP uh, provides and that can be reused. Uh, we use that this knowledge is reusable for other assessment processes. It's not that we use the IEP evaluation to, to present to national or other international uh, agencies, but of course the framework is, is there and the knowledge is there and that's something that is never lost in this process. We get external independent guidelines and recommendations. That's something that uh, I think we all in universities uh, can uh, value uh, because not only universities but in most uh, organizations an external uh, recommendation is usually more valued than, than, um, than an internal one. Uh, or at least it's more uh, as a, a common distance to all the interests in the organization. And at the end of the day, we have a public, both national and international, demonstration of quality in the scope of a model uh, that is recognized by, uh, by a lot of universities and by a lot of communities. So, uh, of course, uh, we always expect to have good results from the evaluation, but whatever they are, they are a good demonstration of, of quality. So thank you for your attention and uh, let's discuss a little bit. Thank you, Nuno, for this, uh, for sharing your experience. I have a question. Let's, uh, let's take the first question from, from the audience. Uh, can you give us an example of one of these broader recommendations that you mentioned? Uh, well, the broader recommendations, for example, I, I have the report over there on the other side of the table, so I, uh, but uh, I try to remember, for example, to discuss the, even the structure of the boards of the university uh, and the collaboration between the General Council and the Senate, which is something at the very, I would say, constitutional level. 
while in the first recommendations they were saying improve uh, the number of uh, the courses taught in English, uh, that's a very specific one. Uh, this uh, in the second recommendation we're talking about uh, broad organizational structure and how the schools should be organized in departments and so on. Usually the topics that uh, trigger a war in a, every university, uh, but uh, a peaceful war, of course. But that's the kind of the recommendations. All right, thank you. I can I can answer the other question we've got. What do we mean in the poll question about with the final decision? It's uh, it's more if there is a yes or no decision, you are accredited, you're not accredited. Something that is not applicable. No, no, no. IEP. So that's no. what we might find. Uh, I'm interested. No, yeah. I'm interested in noticing that in the in the um, poll we also have the majority of the participants saying that in their experience in in these kind of evaluate or any kind of evaluation processes, it's the self evaluation phase that is the most useful one. So, um, Nuno, as a as a as a result of the IEP evaluations, uh, was there something? Extremely surprising that came came to you from the from the IEP panel, uh, or was most were most of the things something that had kind of come up already in the self evaluation phase. Uh, I I cannot remember the uh, any uh, extreme surprise. the The good thing is that they they uh, the interaction with the with the review committees and, and all that, they allow us to put everything under a common framework and common perspective, because we tend uh, usually to, to have this local strategy, some people are more concerned with learning, some people with more with research, internationalization. So we, uh, in a free uh, uh, regime, we tend to, uh, to separate our concerns. And this was probably the most, um, the most important. Let me just, going back to the poll, that's true, the self-evaluation phase uh, has uh, more objective uh, impact, so uh, you, can, you can operationalize the recommendations easier. Uh, and this, is our, this was our case, it's not, I'm not saying it's always like this. Uh, in the follow-up review, uh, it's very much uh, food for thought and it helps us to design um, uh, plans at a more strategic level. So the common faculty member will not see an immediate impact of the second uh, type of evaluation. Uh, so there are two levels of, of concern in those, in those evaluations, but both are very important for us. All right, thank you. At this stage, I would uh, invite uh, Anna and um, Tatiana to join us and uh, enable their microphones and uh, their cameras. We'll, I'll have a couple of questions where perhaps all of you can and can contribute. Uh, well, let, let's start with a question from the audience that uh, as part of the site visits, are the evaluators, evaluators attending any, any lectures of, of the university when they are on the site visit? And here I'm, I'm looking at uh, Tatiana first and then uh, Nuno. Yes. Thank you for the question, and uh, I have to say no, team doesn't attend the lectures because this evaluation it's more on helicopter view, like looking for the, the strategic issues, but of course we evaluating the study programs outcomes, also study course description and discussion with academic staff about the approaches to deliver learning outcomes and other issues concerning uh, lecturing and teaching and research particular. So base it on this evidence and later from discussions with students, we get understanding about the level of teaching and learning in particular university. No, no. Okay, let me... Let... No, no, I don't think it was missing. The, well, first of all, the evaluators, they are... Uh, uh, normally and usually and for sure with IEP they are smart people uh, so they interview uh, they interview students very well and I know how that is done and uh, of course attending lectures would, uh, would have a problem with this uh, Eisenberg principle because if they, they were inside of a, of a lecture the lecture would change so uh, no they don't attend lectures but there is a, a, an intensive contact with students 
um, and students are usually right and we cannot uh, convince them to say something that is not real. I mean, this is my, my experience. So, yeah. Yes. We, we, we call our um, evaluators quite often in, in IEP uh, critical friends. Um, that they, they come to the university as critical friends. How, how, how do you, Tatiana, see this? What does it mean to be a critical friend? For you as a evaluator? Yes, when you evaluate, of course, you have to be rather positive and appreciate what universities already achieved. And universities are proud about this achievement. But um, coming from different countries and different levels of universities, uh, development stages, so uh, experts are seeing where is a gap, where is not used potential or hidden potential for university development. And that's why IEP could be used and is used like a tool for organizational development further. And that's why we asking critical questions. We sometimes creating certain debate already during visits about the maybe neglected points of development. As we saw from previous polls that uh, universities are very much now concerned about quality culture, but not having this really broad view of what are the factors uh, which influences the uh, final quality level. So this is, that's why we also critical towards what we achieved and what has to be achieved. No, no. Is this visible in the site visits that they, that the panel sees itself as a friend, but critical? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we had a very, very good uh, interaction with the, with the panel members. It's, uh, well, even before being critical, it's always, uh, a surprise sometimes the questions they ask, uh, or some of the questions they ask, others are common to all the community, but uh, having people from, uh, from with other experiences raising questions that we never thought about, it's always very, very important. And I, I think it gives also the, the community here some awareness of the quality procedures, uh, which are very often a little bit mixed up with bureaucracy as uh, let me uh, put my hat as an academic and all this is just administrative work and they keep asking for things and meetings and stuff like that that's the real thing i think uh people that are attending know that know the story uh, and uh, this experience was not a burden at all uh, i must say of course it took some time for people but it created it contributed to the to make the quality uh needs um, to improve the awareness of those quality needs and to, uh, let's say, leave a couple of cents in the pocket of every professor and uh, student and uh, staff. So I think it's, a, it's an ongoing process. They don't become uh, quality uh, fanatics in the next day, uh, but they, at least they, they start to, they understand why we are doing this and then they see the feedback of their, of their time, which is usually the most complicated thing to steal them. If I may add, uh, Tia, because we know that university people are very busy and occupied with their daily activities, and this self-evaluation culture and self-reflection culture should be more developed, and then people could talk about their activities, what they are aiming, what are achievements to share, what they are doing, and this self-evaluation phase, it was mentioned in previous uh, poll questions, that of course it's very helpful. Finally, the self-evaluation group gathers together information, looking for data. Usually this data into computers of somebody else, but maybe we have to do it regularly to deliver longitudinal study and to reflect critically what really we are achieving and are we achieving what we've been planning. So this is the most, uh, like uh, it was mentioned before, useful um, idea behind also this evaluation to take a comprehensive look about university, what they are doing and how they are doing. Yeah. Thank you. One of the things we, we, we say also in that often in, in our evaluation program is that we have no externally set criteria that we always take uh, the four questions that uh, Tatiana presented in the beginning 
as a starting point and uh, the really the the criteria for the evaluation comes from the institutional mission and goals um and uh, well first first question to anna that when you, when you look at the different reports do you is this reflected in the reports that uh, the the that IEP teams, do they approach uh, institutions differently depending on what the institution has said that their profile is or are there differences in the reports or do you say the same recommendations come in again and again? Um, I, I think it's a, it's a balance between the two sides. Um, the, the, the reports definitely do reflect the type of institution and, and the mission. Um, and this is why it's, it's really important that the, the self-evaluation report of the institution um, really looks at what the institution is trying to achieve so that we, the, the IEP team can then take this as a starting point for their, their visit. And the reports then issue recommendations um, that, um, that will help the institution to achieve their, their specific mission and goals. That said, there are um, certain recommendations that one sees coming up more often um, uh, and, and more frequently across different types of, of institutions in it and in different countries. Um, so uh, there, are, there are some, some issues that are, um, I think, common challenges across Europe, but, um, but a lot of the other recommendations are, are specific to the institution or need to take into account the um, the national context because this is something that of course the the experts also have to to become a little bit familiar with um, is what is the the national operating context of, of the institution perhaps there are restrictions based on the legal framework in which they're they're operating so these things are also taken into account no no is it difficult for a, to start a self-evaluation when you don't have a clear criteria against which you will be judged you want. If it is typical to start the self-evaluation? Difficult. Difficult. Challenging. Uh, yes, you, you have to uh, a little bit understand the framework. Uh, I wouldn't say that when we started we had no previous experience. We all have some previous experience. It's a matter of uh, organizing the, the information and the rationale uh, according to this framework. I would just like to comment on what uh, Anna said, this uh, uh, general versus uh, specific uh, uh, evaluation criteria. I think it's important and, and it, it's also an advantage of the two site visits. I mean, let me speak to the academics that are listening. Uh, our, our, usually our complaint is that when we have an assessment is that they don't understand at all how things are done here. Uh, we live in a different world and they come from uh, other places. So uh, they must have missed something. So, uh, um, and this is the zero uh, uh, comment of a lot of academics. Uh, and so the initial self-evaluation and then the first visit and then the second visit, I think it helps us to tune the, the, the members of the committee with the, with the people here at the university. And so at the end, we understand the language of each other pretty well, uh, even though we have some good things and bad things, or good things and not so good things. We never have bad things, that's the principle. We only have things that can be improved. Is that right, Tatiana? Yes, it's true. Uh, uh, no, I mean, that's really, the, it's, this is not a, a joke or a bad yeah. thing. The point is that we have the good things and we have things that we can improve, uh, but we speak the same language at the end. And that's why also we, we ended up with the follow-up um, with the follow-up evaluation, because it we felt that we had uh, uh, someone we could speak to, uh, that, that, that we could speak the same language, and that's very important, otherwise we just forget the, the, the process in the halfway. Adyan, just for you, because I know you're familiar with other systems, uh, other kind of external evaluations as well, but in IEP, is it additional challenge to the panel, or how does it shape the panel's work when they when they don't have a clear external criteria in a sense of, you know, checklist, but the criteria really is the four questions and the institutional yeah. mission. You know, this is very helpful because pool is composed by former rectors, current rectors, former vice rectors, current vice rectors, 
And those people who've been involved into managing universities, they have this understanding about the processes, about the approaches, about, you know, this holistic approach to the university management and governance. So it means that it's really helpful. We know what we are looking for because these different parts of the university activities comes together as previous other um, uh, evaluations goes for program levels from other different agencies, so it's a part of the whole ecosystem. If so, all ecosystem, it's not healthy, so program also, it's not maybe sustainable and developing up to full capacity. That's why it's very helpful A team is composed by different people from different backgrounds, and at the end we come to the necessary points together. Right, thank you. I see we've used our time. It's uh, one hour later than when we started. Um, I hope this has been useful for, for the, those who have been listening to us and you have had an idea of what uh, IEP evaluation is about and perhaps this will give you, even if you're not doing an IEP evaluate, evaluation perhaps in the next future, this will give you some ideas and reflections on uh, how an external evaluation could, uh, could work. And there is a, you can now see on the screen our website, and there you can see really the guidelines that we, uh, we use for the, for the, in the evaluations. And I think uh, even if uh, you don't, you invite us to do an ex the external part of the evaluation, perhaps the guidelines can be of use for you in your self about a reflection in, uh, in an university. But that being said, of course, we, uh, we are looking forward to some registrations again this year and to do new evaluations. And the deadline for registrations is in the end of June. But as Anna said, we are usually very flexible in these matters. This being mm. said, I would like to thank our panelists, Tatiana, thank you. Anna, thank you. and Luno for excellent presentations, uh, very clear, at least to me, and uh, for bearing with all the questions that I posed to you or you got from the, from the audience. Um, yeah. We have a question from the audience, if it is possible to have the PowerPoint presentations, and yes, definitely, we can send them around afterwards. Uh, so, for now, I wish you all a good uh, continuation for your afternoon. And I hope that uh, we have an opportunity to see either in the IEP uh, context or in, in another uh, politicians related discussion or in the end meeting uh, acro across uh, Europe or beyond. Thank you very much for spending the last hour with us and uh, thank you to the panelists once again.